Our brain is the most complicated machine in the world. It's so complex that even after a hundred years of research, to us, this gray matter is still a black box. We still have so much more to learn about memory and learning, connecting the brain to a computer and to other devices, fixing and treating illnesses. And we have to do all this using the brain? The brain is a physical organ comprised of 100 billion nerve cells, each communicating with about 30,000 other nerve cells through connections called synapses. Electrical and chemical signals run around this structural foundation and are responsible for the variety of actions our brain performs, our thoughts, feelings, control over our body, and so on. We, as scientists, try to figure out how these components produce these miracles of the brain. How do you do this? Our approach is to use physical principles to build a computerized model made entirely of mathematical equations, simulating the electrical and chemical activity that takes place in the real biological brain. Then, we try to make the model we built get sick with epilepsy or Parkinson's disease. Once we succeed, we'll understand which components are responsible for the disease, and hopefully we will know how to cure it. This method enables us to find where the neural mechanisms of other diseases hide as well. It also allows us to understand which neural activity represents language, feelings, and thoughts. In short, we will try to decipher all the brain activities from the sensory input to the behavioral output. And when will we see the results? The more progress we make in comprehending the brain and in building a complete model of it, the sooner this will happen. Additional scientific research will help us understand the neural basis of sensory perception and feelings. It will enable us to offer new solutions that would allow disabled people to walk. Moreover, we will be able to translate your neural activity into language and commands that would operate devices in the outside world directly from your brain. With your mind, you'll be able to control avatars which will replace you in international conventions, to wander in the Nahum Gutman Museum inside your brain as if you were actually there, and to operate software and games without the use of keyboard or a mouse. We might even be able to create backups of the brain in order to preserve it and enable people to go on living digitally so that they can communicate and learn even after their physical body has ceased to exist. That's kind of scary. A brain without a body? Every new machine our brain has conceived and developed was scary to us at first. But we end up embracing it and using it to expand both our physical and cognitive abilities. But until that day comes, the brain researcher's primary goal is to understand the brain in order to fix it when it is sick. Still, the human brain is purely physical? What about inspiration, creativity, consciousness, soul? Good question. Those were once questions for philosophers. Today, brain researchers discuss them as well. Only time will tell, perhaps even with your help. <laughs>